Spider-Man History 101. Welcome to Neo Retro, the new series where we take a look at contemporary releases that capture that retro feel. For our first episode, we're looking at the frantic action shooter Kite. While it may appear from this footage that Kite is a twin stick shooter, I would say it's more adjacent to that genre based on a few factors. For starters, the game utilizes two ammo types, and you use either different mouse buttons or gamepad triggers to shoot. Aiming is still handled by the mouse or right stick accordingly, but you still are pushing buttons to shoot, and that alone differs heavily from traditional twin stick shooters like Smash TV or Geometry Wars. In addition, the game was clearly built for mouse and keyboard, so although gamepad support has been implemented, the aim sensitivity is very mouse driven. Fortunately, this title has been getting regular updates since release, and the one on March 14th significantly improved the controller aim. Kite is set in a cyberpunk future, but unlike most themes in the genre, it's not post-apocalyptic or even dystopian society, and rather one of peace. Of course, you do need an antagonist, so enter an army of evil robots that have seized control of a weapons base named Arch City. To combat these bots, you employ your human-operated remote droid, or HORD for short, fully equipped with tons of upgradable weapons and enhancements. While battling through the many floors of Arch City, you will also need to perform certain tasks, mostly related to destroying enemy forces, but also saving the trapped scientists within. The aesthetic speaks for themselves on this one, with bright, beautiful neon pixel art graphics that scratch that late 80s nostalgia itch. Your HORD looks to me like Brigitte Nielsen circa Rocky IV, with enemy design inspired from beloved cyberpunk such as Terminator, Robocop, and Blade Runner. The environments have this crazy organic fused with technology vibe that looks akin to outdoor environments in a contained indoor lab. The soundtrack doesn't disappoint either with solid, fast-paced synth tracks that get you ready for the chaotic battles that face you. For a couple more bucks, you can grab the soundtrack along with the game, which is a worthwhile upgrade if you find the soundtrack as appealing as I did. To accompany the visuals and the audio is gameplay pulled right out of the early 90s arcade. Kite is a fast and frantic shooter that does not reward anyone who stands still. You have to be on the move, dodging and shooting at all times and keep your distance between you and your foes as high as possible. It helps that the bots are quite aggressive, but initially the combat is complicated and a bit confusing. There's no real tutorial other than telling you what the keys slash buttons do, however given that you have two different weapon classes and alt firing for each, I really would have preferred a bit more of an explanation. Your primary class will consist of an energy gun that's tethered to the right button slash trigger and a ballistics gun tethered to the left button slash trigger. You can swap to the alt fire, which is often a souped up energy weapon that I found best against shields and synthetic humans like your droid. Swapping to your other weapon class will give you melee weapons. Yes, this game has melee weapons that are tethered to each hand and quite frankly, they're freaking awesome. Now you don't want to rush in at someone with an automatic weapon, something a good number of your enemies will have. But when they all cluster up and get you stuck in a corner, this method can clear a group with ease. Think of the melee weapons as your frantic attempt to break away from a fatal group. The alt fire of melee is usually an explosive weapon like a rocket launcher that's best served to keep large batches of enemies away from you should you successfully break free. This gets complicated real fast. You do eventually get the hang of it, but it took me probably 8 to 10 levels and a lot of trial and error to get there. Once you're familiar, these weapon systems make sense though, and are quite helpful in dealing with the crazy scenarios of each level. But at first, it's all a bit daunting. At the end of each level, you're given a performance score along with some rewards that allow you to improve your droid. There's a skill tree where you can level up different stats and characteristics in four major areas, which has a very limited distribution with every few levels. Scrap, on the other hand, is rewarded in larger abundance after each level, which allows you to upgrade every component of your droid's body, as well as crafting new weapons. The options and benefits of these upgrades and weapons is directly related to the number of scientists you've rescued, so it's definitely in your best interest to find them all within each level. I have to admit, both the skill tree and upgrades aren't explained the best, and if you're not paying attention, it's possible to completely skip that portion between levels. The way the skill tree upgrades work and the many stats involved in every upgrade and weapon are also extremely deep and complicated. I love spreadsheet-worthy number tweaking more than most, but it was all just a bit too complex at first. 
After knocking out the first half dozen levels, however, you get much more familiar with the process and the tweaks you're performing. In the end, Kite proves itself to be a robust, deep, and insane shooter that will keep you on your toes from start to finish. Like many games of this type, your first step will be to practice, second to beat the game, and finally start perfecting the runs on each level for bragging rights with ridiculous high scores. I have to admit the difficulty is pretty brutal, although two updates have been released this week that have reduced the challenge, but there are unlimited lives, so hopefully you won't have any trouble completing this game. Now, completing it with decent scores or without dying hundreds of times, that's going to be reserved for those with practice. Those players that really practice will eventually learn the ability to kite, which is a term for managing the distance to your foes while taking them out in large quantity. Oh yeah, and don't die, which is probably the toughest requirement of all. I will admit that later in the game, bosses and difficult levels have the ability to drag out the experience a bit too long, but perhaps that's the game telling you to improve your skills before attempting to complete this level. For those that love titles focusing on dodging enemies, blasting them in the face as you escape, and grinding for the best score as you perfect your run, you'll adore Kite. Although I'm not very good at this title, I have to admit it was a quite enjoyable five to six hours from beginning to end, despite some of these gripes. I also have to commend developer Labcat Games for being able to capture the game gameplay of this retro-inspired title, whereas many of its peers only manage to nail the aesthetics. You can find Kite on Steam for Windows-based PCs. Check out the links in the description to access the store page. For Gaming History 101 and Neo Retro, this is your host Fred Rojas saying peace out. If you are a listener who wants to see a particular game covered, or a developer who thinks your game would be good for this segment, please don't hesitate to contact us at contact at GamingHistory101.com.